I'll show you a few examples of how to use macros in Affinity Photo. Macros allow you to record a series of operations and then play them back instantly, so you can use them to dramatically speed up workflows and automate repetitive procedures. Let's start with a straightforward example. First, I'll show the macro panel by going to Window, Macro. This will appear on the left hand side. I'll click the red record button to begin recording operations, and I'll add a channel mixer adjustment by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Channel Mixer. You'll see this operation gets added to the recorded steps of the macro. Now I'll change the color model to gray and close the dialog. Again, this action is recorded on the left here. I'll double click into this layer and call it Weighted Grayscale Intensity, then use Return. The renaming of the layer also appears in the recorded steps here. I'll now stop recording using this button. If I delete this layer I've just created, I can preview the macro steps by clicking the play button. This works well and converts the image to monochrome using a weighted RGB intensity calculation, producing a more natural and balanced result compared to if I were to use the black and white adjustment. I'll delete this layer before moving on and I'll now save this macro. Individual macros can be saved and also imported using these two options on the macro panel here, but it's much more useful to group macros together into categories. To do this, I'll click the Add to Library button, and I'm now prompted to save my macro into a category. A new installation of Affinity Photo will only have this default category. So I'll save my new macro into this category by calling it Weighted Grayscale Intensity, then clicking OK. This will actually open the Library panel automatically, which is situated next to the Macro panel. If I wanted to create my own category to store my macros, I could click on the Panel Options here and choose Create New Category. I'll call this category Custom Macros and use Return to create it. Now I can drag my Weighted Grayscale Intensity Macro from the default category and release the mouse button to place it into my new category. This category can be renamed, deleted or exported by clicking on the Category Options button here. To import macros created by other users, you can either go to the Panel Options here and choose Import Macros, or you can drag drop the files directly onto the user interface. For example, in my folder here, I have a .af macros file. I'll drag drop this onto Photo, release the mouse button, and it will install it. If you don't already have the library panel visible, it will also appear at this point. Running a macro from a category is simply a case of single clicking it. So for example, I'll single click the watercolor effect macro here, and it will produce a watercolor rendering appearance. More complex macros can be created within Affinity Photo, but it does require some working knowledge of explicit layer operations, and also knowing how to alter default layer behaviors. I'll show you one example on this document. I may want to create a diffuse glow effect using Gaussian Blur with some blending options, and I want to do it non-destructively using Live Filter Layers. Now by default, Live Filter Layers have a dynamic behavior depending on the type of layer you currently have selected. If the layer is a content layer, such as a pixel or image layer, a Live Filter will child layer into it. Whereas if the layer is an adjustment or another type of non-content layer, the live filter will be added above it as a parent layer instead. If you are recording a macro that uses a live filter layer, you may want that layer to always be added above. To ensure this, I can go to the Assistant Preferences up here. Then on the dialog, I'll change the bottom option, adding filter layer to selection, to add filter as new layer and close the dialog. Now I can record my macro, and whichever behavior I have mandated on that dialog will be recorded into the macro, regardless of what another user may have it set to if they were to run the macro on their installation of Affinity Photo. I'll switch to the macro panel, 
click record, then go to layer, new live filter layer, blur, Gaussian blur. On the dialog, I'll check preserve alpha, bring the radius up, then change the blend mode to screen. I now need to configure the blending of this layer further. So I'll close the dialog and open the blend options by clicking on the cog icon here. On source layer ranges, I'll create a non-linear graph that blends the Gaussian blur layer more into the highlight tonal regions compared to the shadows and midtones. Then I will also set the layer opacity to 70%. And finally, I'll double click into the Gaussian blur layer and rename it to Diffuse Glow. Then I'll stop recording and I'll add this to my custom macros library. Calling it Diffuse Glow. Now I can try this macro on another document I have open to see how it works across different types of imagery. Macros can be edited retrospectively. For example, I might find that 70% is generally too strong for most images. I can right click this Diffuse Glow macro and choose Edit Macro. The operations with cogs to the right of them can have various parameters changed. In this case, I might click the cog next to Set Global Opacity and change the opacity value to 50. Then I can preview this change by running the macro. What I may in fact want to do is give the user control of this opacity so they can alter it interactively for their own imagery. I'll delete this diffuse glow layer. Then I'll click on the cog icon again. This time I'll enable the eye icon. I will then be prompted to name this playback parameter. I'll call it strength and click OK. Now, when I run the macro, a dialog will appear at the bottom right with the opacity option presented as a slider named Strength. This allows me to control the opacity before committing the macro, and I'll see the result update as soon as I let go of the mouse button. Once I'm happy, I can save this macro back out to my custom category using the same name and I can right-click on the first version of this macro and delete it. Finally, I will walk you through an example of recording a macro that involves layer stack manipulation and arrangement. I want to create a sketch filter effect that will be contained within a group and have multiple adjustments so the end user can configure the effect. I'll go to the macro panel and click record. Then the first step will be select Deselect layers. This will ensure that the next operation will happen at the top of the layer stack, regardless of which layer was previously selected. I'll then go to Layer, New Group. This creates an empty group. I'll double click this and rename it to Sketch Effect and use Return or Enter to confirm this. Now I'll go to Layer, Merge Visible. This creates a merged pixel layer of all the layer work so far. I'll double click and rename this to Sketch Base Effect. I want to move this layer inside the Sketch Effect group, but if I do so using a click drag operation, I'll be told that the move operation cannot be recorded. This is because layer operations must be recorded explicitly using menu commands or shortcuts. Otherwise, Affinity Photo has no way of keeping track of the layer Z order. To move this layer into the group directly beneath it, I'll use Arrange, Move Inside. Be aware that you can also record other Arrange commands on this menu, such as moving layers up and down the layer stack, including moving them to the front which is the top, and to the back, which is the bottom. With this layer still selected, I'll now go to Filters, Detect, Detect Edges. 
This will use a convolution filter to expose just the edge detail. All of the none edge detail is currently black. I want it to be white, so I'll go to Layer, Invert. I also want to remove all color detail from this result. I can use the same approach from the first example in this video. I'll add a channel mixer adjustment and set the color model to gray. Because I don't want the user to configure this or even be concerned with it, I'll then click Merge to destructively merge this adjustment down into the base sketch effect layer. Now, zooming in, I may also want to soften the result slightly. I'll go to Filters, Blur, Bilateral Blur, and increase the radius to 6 pixels which will blur none edge detail whilst keeping the sharper edge detail intact. I'll apply this filter, and now I want to give the user some controllable options. First, I'll add a recolor adjustment. I'll change the hue to 240 degrees and saturation to 15. The idea behind this is to allow the user to tint or colorize the line detail. I'll rename this recolor adjustment to line color, but I may not want it active by default, so I'll choose to hide it on the layers panel. Next, I may want the user to be able to change the tint of the white background or the paper white. I'll add a white balance adjustment, then rename this to paper color. There is no need to hide this adjustment as it isn't altering the result with its default values. Finally, to neaten up the presentation, I may want the sketch effect group to be selected initially rather than one of these child layers. I'll click the group on the layers panel and I'll see a selection criteria box appear. When recording more complex macros with parent and child layers or the requirement to select layers above or beneath the current layer, you can use these options to help guide the recording and playback process. But for now, I can only choose Select Parent Layer. So, I'll click Select. Now I can stop recording the macro. And I'll save it to my custom macros library. As sketch effect. I'll try this on a different document to make sure the result looks acceptable across different imagery. This works well, and I can now expand the sketch effect group and enable the line color option if I wanted to color the line detail. I could also click the paper color thumbnail and use the white balance slider to control the temperature or balance of the white paper. So there we go, a few examples of how to record and use macros in Affinity Photo. Don't forget that the biggest obstacle is understanding what can and cannot be recorded as part of a macro. Generally speaking, you will want to use the top menu options wherever possible, such as the operations on the Arrange and Select menus. This will solve most limitations of the recording process and allow you to automate more complex procedures. I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.